<clears throat> I believe you're in my seat. I understand, but you have to do something about your friend, or one of us will. Seriously, the nerve of him. Now with that out of the way, let's take a look at what Art was so excited about. Today, it looks like we will be looking at Trick or Treat Studios 1-6 scale Art the Clown from the Terrifier film. Recently, Trick or Treat Studios has made quite the splash in introducing a 1-6 scale figure line into their product lineup. And to say these figures have been popular is an understatement. Art here has been nearly consistently on back order, and even more difficult to find since the release of the second film. Finally, having him in hand here, I can say that I'm really impressed with the packaging. Everything from having a collector-friendly window box to using a magnet for the window flap. The product presentation does not look or feel cheap in hand. The color scheme is a simple black and white and red. On either side of the box and on the inside flap, there are three different promotional stills of Art himself, which I had first thought were only production stills of the doll, but they appear to actually be of the actor. Let's break that tab, shall we? Art, if you're still watching, this is how it's done. So the product packaging is well done, especially at this price point, reminding me more of an upscale NECA figure than Hot Toys or Blitzway packaging, but that gets into the subject of dollar for dollar value, which I will address in a moment. Inside we have a vacuform plastic tray, safely holding the figure and accessories in place. Nothing fancy, but not over encumbered with twisty ties or rubber bands, which is always a plus in my book. The less I have to get a pair of scissors near the figure's costume or paint job, the happier I am. As you can see, the head, hands, and feet all have plastic coverings to keep scuffing from happening during transportation. The costume feels light but sturdy, almost like thin parachute or tent material, which is good because a heavier material would hang differently and probably cause awkward bunching. Included is a hacksaw, so you and your Barbies can recreate that infamous scene. And as well as his two open hands, there is a gripping hand and surprisingly detailed scalpel holding hand, totaling three right hands and one left hand. My immediate impression is that the portrait is spot on. After just lifting his arms up into the jazzy hands position, I can almost hear him not say anything and being a mime. And the costume is delicate and probably prone to snagging, so be careful when handling it. There is a zipper on the back of the costume for easy removal, but I don't see anybody swapping out the body with any of the hulking He-Man Fiken counterparts, although it would be hilarious if someone did. The body is a hard plastic, superposable action figure physique with fairly good articulation everywhere, except for the head and neck, which could use at least one extra joint. The saw is intricate and well weathered, but I wouldn't expect anything less from a horror prop making company. It's crafted out of a semi-soft plastic, so you don't have to worry as much about the saw blade snapping in two when you are fitting it into his hand. And the hand in question is a pinky finger extended, mimicking Art's exaggerated movements. 
The scalpel hand is what I'm really impressed with. The scalpel is pursed between his thumb and forefinger and looks perfectly proportionate to the hand, giving it the sense of being lightly gripped, which is really different for this kind of accessory. As for the portrait, I see no reason not to be perfectly content with both the paint application and sculpt. The paintwork is not sloppy, and the sculpt holds a lot of micro detail, especially around the mouth and teeth. There are some small ridges around the face, which make me wonder if this is a 3D print, or at least a mold of a 3D print. 3D print or not, though, any way you look at it, this is an incredible likeness for just over $100. That being said, I might go back and repaint mine, more of a flat sheen over the face, and repaint the eyes into a different position. As you can see on the hands, the fine detail is there. The paint application is a little more slapdash, but that's fine for hands that are supposed to be stained with blood, and excrement, I guess. And I'm considering repainting the rest of the costume bloody to match these hands. Not so much the excrement, though. Now let's move on to the standing and posing. When his entire weight is over his shoes, Art stands just fine, and the joints are stiff enough to keep him in a position like this. However, if you widen his stance, he is top-heavy enough to cause him to topple at just about the slightest movement, and sometimes without any movement at all. So of course, my fix for this was to grab one of my daughter's doll stands, and not a heavy duty stand at that. And it worked perfectly well because the figure is relatively light. I do understand that they were trying to keep the cost down, but I really do wish they would include a cheap stand. But if it was between that and another $25, I'm happy to just make my own. Which brings me to my philosophy on collecting. I remember when I first pulled the McFarlane Dark Ages Mandarin figure from its packaging. I was floored by the sheer amount of detail and the exquisite paint applications that went into such an affordable figure. At that time, high-end collectibles were few and far between, and anything in that quality range was usually reserved for extremely expensive garage kits, even by today's standards. If you wanted quality like that, you better believe that you're going to be painting it yourself. At that point, McFarland started something in the industry, something that hadn't been seen in the US toy market before, an expectation of quality over price. And these days, there is a growing dissatisfaction when I open a figure, in that the price is often a little higher than the quality, and so that puts a little bit of a gray cloud over collecting, and breeds a sort of dissatisfaction when the portrait doesn't meet the promotional stills or the quality control diminishes the value. And as time goes on, this problem is reaching into all markets, all the way down to the grocery store, as you are finding less value attached to higher prices just about everywhere. So Trick or Treat Studios has bought quite a bit of goodwill from me here. Their masks and props are often awesome. Heck, I would have expected to pay $200 for a life-size gremlin in the 90s. Never mind now. Though I do probably have a few small complaints about art. I would like a stand greater mobility of the neck joint, and of course more accessories. Overall, I'm just absolutely floored by the fact that this thing was just over $100. Most 1-6 scale companies these days think that just the size gives them license to start the bidding at well over $200, no matter the quality. So to me, opening art felt a lot like those old days of getting a brand new McFarlane for under $13. Now what's underneath the costume, you might ask? Just in case you want to start playing art waits for his laundry. Here's a look at the posable body. May it forever haunt your dreams. One missing accessory is a trash bag, but this was easily rectified by cutting a 6x6 square out of a real trash bag and then stapling it around three sides and turning it inside out. After that, I filled it with styrofoam packing peanuts to give it a little bit of bulk while still making it easy for him to hold without toppling. It's a simple solution that gives you an extra dimension of display options. Going forward, I would really like to see a few things in a Terrifier 2 figure. Number one, a more posable head and neck. Number two, one or two extra head sculpts would be great. And maybe the possibility of an accessory pack containing things like his little squeaky horn, or the glasses, a table leg with spikes in it, and other such weapons of mayhem, similar to the accessory pack they did with Halloween. And of course, I would like to see them do a pale girl figure, maybe with light up eyes. Like I said, he is well worth the price if you are a fan of the property. And I hope the Trick or Treat Studios continues to make a name for themselves with 1-6 scale collectibles, and look forward to seeing what they do next. If you like the content on this channel, 
please don't hesitate to subscribe. Slowly but surely we are building a community and I have a lot of great content coming soon. And from all of us, remember, never stop collecting.